All right, so here's a little bit of the behind the scenes of the trio of fits. Uh, this short film consists of pretty much all green screen work whenever you see a real actor walking through. Uh, images and little video clips that I've taken from online and compiled them all together here. Uh, for this opening scene, which is about the only thing I'm really going to go over here, uh, it's got a bunch of little effects to it, just little subtleties, um, and I thought I would share them with you. Uh, not saying by any means that this is the proper way of going about it or the most efficient way, uh, filming and editing and DaVinci Resolve, which is the program that I'm using right now, uh, I'm all completely new to this. So going through this process, I've tried a couple of different ways of doing things and being new to it, I'm sure people who are professionals at it and even advanced users at it, uh, they know more tricks about it. So this by no means is the way of doing it, it's just how I went about doing it. Um, with this main scene right here, it consists of pretty much three to four elements right here. This main image that you're seeing right now, the phone booth, uh, that was an image taken off of a wallpaper site online. The author wasn't given on a, a wallpaper site, so I wasn't able to give credit to the actual author to it. And being that the wallpaper site didn't credit the author, I wasn't about to credit the wallpaper site. But anyway, this is uh, just a still image uh, that I did a little bit of coloring to. This right here is what the image looked like when I downloaded it. Uh, uh, did a little bit of coloring, wanted to retain the red in the phone booth just for aesthetics. Uh, let me backtrack out of here. So we got the main phone booth, which was essentially the first layer. Then we have the actor that's going to be on top of it, which we got right here. And then we have the fire hydrant. I popped the fire hydrant in here. Uh, I guess that would be the first thing I'll go over here. Uh, is the reason behind the fire hydrant. If we back up here, right about there, when I shot the actor walking behind or in front of the green screen, there was a desk within the shot, which wasn't noticed until afterwards, and the camera was taken down. And <clears throat> to redo it all, it just didn't seem uh, logical if there was another way around it. So, the placement of the fire hydrant, you notice right here, there's a very harsh line. Right where the cursor is. That's where the corner of the desk was. So the thought of popping in a trash can or a park bench or a fire hydrant, which we ended up going with, uh, came to mind. So that's the reason behind the fire hydrant right here. Uh, the other next thing, I guess, would be right now, as you can see, the, the first base layer is the phone booth, and then the actors laid on top of that. But you need to get the actor, as you've seen in the, the video, uh, you need to get the actor inside of the phone booth. So what it ended up doing is taking this background image, making a copy of it, chopping out just the phone booth area of that copy, and pasting it on top of the actor, which we can see right here. Voila, he bounced right inside of the phone booth here. Uh, there's a little bit more to that, which I can go over right now. Was that clip six? Sorry about this. Yeah, it's clip six. Uh, clip six. So here it is. So that's the portion of the main image. Uh, just chopped it out, and then after that, in order to be able to, and when, when pasting it on top of the actor, this right here completely hit the actor. So I went through and chopped out each window right here, which we can see there. So now this back, this great background is actually translucent. Um, so we have no windows in this image anymore which enables us to see the actor through it. So this portion right here that goes around the windows of the doors here uh, hides the actor and it gives the illusion that he's inside of the phone booth. Uh, another thing to take notice here would be the shadows that the actor is trying to cast here, or that we try to get the actor to cast. Uh, you notice that right here is a dark spot. Moving around a little bit. So with that, that was just a simple round mask, as 
to see right here. Uh, and just darken that image. And tracked it behind him. Uh, throughout the movement, made it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, just to try to emulate a true shadow a little bit more. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Uh, one other thing that we can see here is once the actor's in the phone book, he actually picks up the phone handle of the telephone in there. picks it up, and that's just a flat image, that phone booth picture, and I've got it to his ear, and this is farther I moved around with him, zoom in a little bit, with him when he's over, peeking out the door, um, with that is what we ended up doing. did is film the actor, took the main clip of that, brought it into Fusion, downloaded a model, downloaded this model of the phone handle, tracked it onto him to follow his movement around, but as you can see, it's sitting on the wrong side of him right now. So we ended up making a duplicate of the actor's of the actor footage without the phone handle, placed it on top, and by doing that, by placing it on top, it completely hid the phone, since this image is covering up the, the first image of the actor and the phone meted in there. So then we went into the second image that was hiding everything, uh, hiding everything, and then went in and rotoscoped frames where we wanted to see the phone handle stick out. So there, I just want to see it at the bottom, uh, over here. I guess you want to stick it out at the bottom right there and also the top. Because if we didn't, right there is without anything, so the main image is being hidden, and then we rotoscope both the bottom of the phone and the top of the phone, so it looks like he's actually holding it. And there you can see this poor rotoscope. So that took care of the phone handle. One other thing would be the covered image by the fire hydrant was there, getting the guy into the phone booth, the shadow on the bottom. Oh, there's the lighting. So as the, uh, as the actor walked up, one would have the lighting that was within the phone booth shining out, that you can see across the floor here. Also illuminate the actor a little bit when he's walking through, so it looks like he's walking through a shadow and he's getting caught by the light of the phone booth, and then he's walking back into a shadow, which should be right around here. And you can see where it's dark, now his foot's just starting to enter light, and you can see more light through his thigh, working his way up his chest, now he's falling back into a shadow, and then when he gets to the final phone booth, the light from the phone booth inside of that is supposed to be illuminating him, illuminating him fully. So for that, a little bit of so for that, oh look at that. Slides. Did a little bit of masking <coughs> where the light should be uh, peeking through and illuminating him. Raised up some of the gain and uh might play with the contrast a little, I don't remember exact settings. And came up with this. So 
so right, right here, here is a pretty, pretty good thing. You see how, how dark, dark he is, is how light, light it is in there? there. Just, Just to add, add a little bit more realism to him. Um, wow, it's, it's been a while since I noticed what, what this looked like without any of that. Let's try to... Uh, let's try to... Is that going to be still? Just got rid of the highlighting for the light coming through the phone booth. Now let's get rid of the shadows. Alright, so right now I just turned off the light illuminating from the phone booth and the shadows that the actor would cast. And let's see what it looks like. This right here is the footage shot of the actor essentially walking up the walkway into the phone booth uh, with all the green screen right here. Uh, this is what the original footage looked like. Oh, back up a little bit here. And that's the corner of the desk I was talking about earlier that the fire hydrant hides. So. Sorry for the choppiness here. And that is that. And one thing that needed to be keep it <coughs> kept in mind, keep it in mind, kept in mind uh, while filming the actor here was the angle at which the picture was taken at, which we'll show right here. So it looks like when they took the picture, you know, the camera person was standing somewhere over in that neck of the woods shooting down the street. When we set up the video camera to film the actor, that same thing had to be kind of simulated or mocked. If, uh, as you can see, the camera is placed somewhere around here. If we were to place the camera here and the actor still walked that same exact path, you're going to get more of a shot of the back side of the actor or the side of him, and that wouldn't really jive when he entered into the phone booth here. Uh, that was quite the challenge to do because, as you see, this is a fairly small room. Uh, but... Anyway, that's just something to keep in mind that if you were to overlay green screen work on top of still images, which you didn't take, or even if you did take them, is uh, to make sure you can match up the angles at which both the image was taken at and you start shooting your footage at. Uh, definitely possible if you can control the lighting on both of them so shadows get casted correctly. Uh, that would definitely help out a lot. But uh, paying attention to that camera angle is a pretty important thing. And here's a setup for the detective looking out of the window uh, with the camera angle from outside looking in. Uh, there's the camera. There's the shade. And right over here is where the actor was standing. And let's see. And you can see the camera right there. And got some lights over here to get a little bit of a glow to the left of the actor. Cast a shadow on the right side of him. And that's the setup. Here's a scene of the detective walking into the room. Uh, this is the original footage. As you'll notice, the detective walks in from the right-hand side, and then he walks up into the middle of the frame. Uh, this presented a little bit of a problem. Uh, the reason why it was shot like this was just how the room was shaped, <clears throat> and it was able to walk from that side to the blinds a little bit easier. Uh, but that presented a problem with the background image that's placed behind the detective, the room that he's in, to the introductory scene when a detective is first introduced. Uh, when a detective is first introduced, you'll notice that he's sitting on the left-hand side of the screen in the chair. 
uh, with him walking into, and then a couple clips later, a couple scenes later, when he walks into the room, walking into the room with this footage right here of him being on the right side really doesn't kind of coincide with him originally sitting on the left-hand side of the room. So what was done was he just took this clip and flipped it horizontally. So then in turn, now the detective would be walking from the left-hand side into the room. Is, and that's what you see in the final uh, production of it or the final render of it. Uh, throughout that, with this clip right now, you'll see that the actor is holding the phone under his right ear, which is how it was filmed, originally filmed. Uh, we went into, and then when it was flipped horizontally with the flipping of the uh, editing software, then the phone is now under his left ear because everything gets reversed, which that presented a slight problem with the handwriting scene because the handwriting scene was filmed the same way. The actor had the phone under his right ear, writing with his left hand, and then there was an over the head shot. So if you picked up on that during the handwriting scene that the <coughs> phone was in the wrong ear and that it looked like he was writing with his left hand rather than he should have been writing with his right hand, well, that's the reason why. Uh, we tried taking that handwriting scene and doing the same thing, flipping it horizontally, but when that happened, it also flipped all the letters on his notepad the other way, and that just didn't quite jive. Uh, it was one of them things that we kind of just left as is and said, deal with it. So one of the lessons learned, piss poor planning will come back and bite you in the end. With this scene right here of the handwriting and looking out the window down at the street, um, this particular footage that I'm showing right now is not the same footage that was in the final project of the trio of fits. Uh, this was the first take on it. Um, ran into a bit of an issue. In order to get the camera at the right angle and also at the right zoom, the blinds that was using as a prop, uh, they weren't long enough or wide enough, excuse me, to uh, span out the whole uh, size here of the framing. Um, is what I ended up doing and what you're seeing right here is uh, we shot one frame right here of the handwriting and everything. Stop the, stop the camera. Slid the camera over. It was on a tripod. Slid the camera over to the left and just recorded half of the blinds without the actor there. Kind of like a blank plate. Uh, stop recording. Did a third clip of the right hand side. Half of the blinds. Uh, blank clip. And then stitched them all together. Uh, originally what I just described right there. We tried doing it all on a tripod. Uh, bringing it into post into the editing software uh, stitching everything together was a bit tough because moving the camera around on a tripod it wasn't exact uh, then the thought of using a slider mounting the camera to a slider and just sliding it left and right uh, panned out pretty well that's what you're seeing right here but if you do look close like right in this neck of the woods you can see where it's blended in together if you look off to the right over into here you can see the blend marks. Um, let me take the back right away. Might make it a little bit, eh, make it a little bit more stand out though. Uh, so you can see where everything was spliced in together here. Uh, when you add the background, it's not as noticeable, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty sure unless somebody was really trying to rip apart and get to the nitty gritty of the filming of this and the editing of it, they would pick up on it. But if you're just casually watching, I don't think it would really be that noticeable. And especially at something at this beginner level, it would be expected. Uh, but what you see here is done with the three, like I said, it's done with three clips. I'll yank out the middle clip just to give you a little bit more of a visual. So there you can see that was one of the frames on the side. That's the other frame on the side. And then masked them all in. Um, like I said, with the tripod, it didn't work out too well, but with the slider, it worked out pretty good, uh, as long as the slider was set up parallel and everything was measured off correctly. And uh, the end result is what you see in the final project. It just We just ended up buying a, a wider frame, or <coughs> excuse me, wider blinds. Uh, these were just way too narrow. Uh, and the wider blinds are just one shot, no editing or no nothing like that. But I thought I would bring this up and show this just as a way of getting around another problem, if possible. And uh, I show a little bit of behind the scenes of that setup coming up right now. Here's the setup for the handwriting scene. Since the blinds right there are too narrow, uh, I can't get the right frame of shot for the handwriting and still include both left and right sides of the uh, blinds in there. So set up the slide. 
for the gimbal and I got the camera up top so do the first shot with the person writing with it set right in the middle and then just crack it loose move it over and now it's just gonna get oh look at that it's just gonna get <coughs> excuse me it's just gonna get half of the blind and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side it's gonna get half the blind and then in post I'll end up stitching the two together to try to extend the blinds out and we're gonna see what happens with it so this little uh, behind the scenes of editing is coming to an end here uh, again this is definitely not trying to be presented as a way of an absolute way of going about doing things this is uh, just how we would end up doing it uh, if you have any questions about any of the other edits or anything in here please drop a comment below uh, do everything we can to answer everything and if you have a better and alternative way of going about any of this please definitely drop something below uh, love to learn about that and uh, try maybe try it the next time around or something like that uh, alrighty uh, thanks a lot and take care